So Ivana, I'd like to start with you. Could you explain how uh, the issue of language has affected your writing, especially as a writer who um, is familiar with the post-Yugoslav sphere? Okay, I will try. <laughs> Hello from me. Um, it's also for me a little bit awkward situation and uh, it came to my mind uh, since we are talking about language that is very interesting now that all of us are not talking on our language. So, uh, and we are talking about the language. So I think uh, it's uh, one level of discussion. Uh, I'm thinking if we could uh, speak on our maternal language, it would be definitely some other level of discussion uh, because we can be very well familiar with English and very well um, capable to say everything, but uh, it's probably not the same atmosphere or the same level or the same depth uh, of um, um, our expressions and the thoughts while we are trying to have some kind of discussion. So. For me, this is very interesting. Uh, first, uh, we have this uh, little bit awkward situation that we are not in the present. And the second one is the language that we are talking about. And it's not our language that we are talking with. We are trying to express like this. Uh, so um, the language um, uh, for me as a writer, <laughs> it's quite a general topic. Uh, it's the, the only and the most uh, important tool for every writer. So it depends what do we want to express. Um, I think when, when I'm writing, I'm not uh, thinking about the language in a way of um, dictionary, in a way of um, um, grammar, in a way of, um, I don't know, uh, make it make it artificial. Uh, I'm just really trying to express something and then in some rereading later I'm trying to to see what have I done with the language. So uh, for me uh, language is not something that I'm um, trying to fit in or I'm trying to produce. It's just something that um, um, it's, um, it's um, something that it's coming out of me and then uh, later on in the process of writing there are some other layers that we are trying to that I'm trying to to give to my language and and one of the questions that I'm interested in um, can you hear me uh, yes okay one of the questions that I am interested in sort of exploring in this panel is again, and, I, and Isabella will contribute to this too, um, how has sort of the post-Yugoslav experience uh, affected the way you approach language and expression? Mm. Well, um, um, I am coming from a border of Croatia and Serbia. So uh, in my family, uh, there was a one language, um, uh, a little bit different. Um, it depends uh, uh, where my relatives have been lived a few kilometers there or, or a few kilometers here. So uh, I wasn't aware of um, difference. So um, later on, after uh, in the beginning of the war and after, uh, we start to think our language as something which is quite political. So um, I'm using uh, uh, all of the words when I need them, because uh, for me as a writer and as a person, <laughs> I would be I, I would feel um, very very close and and uh, uh, very uh, bordered in a way not not to use everything that I have. I think it's um, in a way uh, richness and nothing else in my work and in my life also not only work. So many interesting points that you bring up that I think we should go back to later. But before, um, so, so it's not focused just on, on one of the panelists. Isabella, as both as a journalist and as someone who has been working on, um, or is following coastal with Serbia um, relations in, in, in different um, aspects, especially through the cultural icebreakers program, which I 
you know, many people who have been a part of and really appreciate um, the eye-opening experience that that was. Can you, uh, would you like to say something about the political um, aspect of um, language and how that affects the people that you've interacted with through your work? Yes, hello everybody, and uh, I share some uh, similar concerns uh, with uh, Ivana, uh, that we speak uh, about language in English, in a uh, language that is uh, not the language of any one of us. Uh, it's a second language, but uh, also it, uh, English uh, become of the main uh, uh, tool of communication among uh, uh, people among citizens uh, in the Balkans, uh, actually. And uh, when you asked me about Kosovo, I remember in uh, the beginning of uh, 2000, when I um, uh, was in Kosovo, there, there were some, uh, uh, actually, some proposals from international community uh, to use uh, English as official language in uh, Kosovo. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, for me, uh, language is also a tool. It's a tool of um, uh, communication and uh, interaction uh, between uh, or among uh, citizens. And uh, uh, I'm coming to Kosovo, I have been coming to Kosovo for 20 years or uh, more, and I remember uh, that uh, in the beginning of 2000s, when I uh, spoke uh, uh, with uh, uh, Serbian citizens, let's say, it was a language of uh, fear uh, and uh, uh, language of emotions. And then um, uh, today, it's uh, the language, it's uh, when it's not manipulated, of course, uh, when you speak with uh, ordinary citizens, uh, uh, it's more rational and it's a language about uh, economy, about, about development um, and other everyday uh, 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 problems. Uh, also, uh, the language, it's the issue how um, uh, ethnic communities, different ethnic communities, which not speak the language of uh, uh, majority, how do they uh, go to, to interactions with uh, other? And for me, it was, um, uh, I um, was very often in many Serbian uh, villages. Uh, I spent a lot of time in many Serbian villages in Kosovo. And uh, uh, for example, what, uh, uh, how they uh, go, how they start communication with other parts of uh, Kosovo and with other citizens of Kosovo. And uh, uh, what are meeting points uh, of that uh, communications. And for example, shopping malls become, or cafes. And how do you start communication in a shopping mall? And uh, uh, what is the level of that uh, communication and um, how do you uh, deeper that communication do you stay in touch with uh, uh, people etc and uh, but when i speak from uh, this experience of uh, intercultural icebreakers uh, that is something what it's uh, uh, very important because uh, such kind as polyp as well also uh, uh, provide some uh, secure space for deep communication and uh, for long-term communication among, uh, uh, among people, among uh, uh, citizens. And uh, for example, I see that, uh, um, uh, I mean, I, we can see, uh, we can speak also in the same way about the Hungarian uh, minority in uh, Serbia or uh, any minority or uh, Romanian minority in uh, Hungary, etc. And we go further and further. Uh, but um, uh, uh, that is uh, what we have today. It's actually the the uh, the, the, the consequence of the wars and. Uh, uh, it, it is the consequence of the uh, rebased uh, today identity or, or uh, reduced identity on this, on this ethnic, uh, ethnic identity, uh, where the language also play a uh, very important role. And then we, um, uh, let's say, imagine some uh, languages and uh, differences, and, but we can talk about that uh, later on.
Uh, yes, definitely. I just briefly before I go pass on to Demetrius, could you explain what intercultural icebreakers was? Um, I'm not perhaps not all um, followers and listeners of this um, panel mm -hmm. might be aware of that. Uh -huh. uh, uh, yes, intercultural. Yes, excuse me. Uh -huh. Do you want me to explain now? Yes, yes please, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. yes. It's, uh, we started this program in 2014, but we, um, and, uh, it's, uh, we tried to establish that program maybe for 10 years or more, and it's an um, exchange of uh, young artists from Kosovo and Serbia, and uh, uh, they uh, um, uh, have uh, joined uh, uh, visit stud, uh, uh, art studies to Pristina, um, uh, Belgrade, etc. They have opportunity to visit uh, art institutions uh, uh, and uh, finally to produce some artwork uh, together and uh, to present actually the, the, uh, the, the um, let's say, final goal of this program is uh, to show that uh, our uh, identities uh, uh, cannot be used on, uh, reduced on ethnic identity. Uh, we try to promote this interculturalism, but it's also important to do that uh, not just uh, uh, cross border, but, but also inside of each of our societies. Actually. And uh, that is the problem because, uh, for example, uh, if we speak about uh, literature, uh, it's uh, very uh, still a very small uh, number of translations uh, of uh, um, of the uh, books uh, from uh, uh, let's say bordering countries from the from the neighbors uh, which speak different languages and uh, we really uh, have a very small number of uh, translated books of the Greek authors or Albanian authors uh, etc. Um. Thank you, Isabella. And Dimitris, um, as you've been able to tell so far, asking anyone who professionally deals with writing to talk about language is a topic that is, could be the source of endless, um, pardon me, endless um, discussions and debate. And but, speculation. And speculation, of course. Could you briefly um, sort of say, uh, as a writer, um, talk about what your goal and aim is when you're writing it? What, kind, what do you want the language uh, I, I would like, um, uh, y y yes, uh, well, I mean, first I would like to go back to a couple of issues that were raised, especially uh, by uh, Isabella here. Uh, and one thing um, that Ivana and Isabella agreed are that, uh, is that uh, they are now in a conversation in which they're not speaking their own language. The same goes for me here. Uh, well, I beg to differ in the sense that almost everything I do, I do in a language other than Greek, unless, of course, my writing, which takes place in Greek. So, well, and mostly um, my, my readings and my lectures, they're uh, in English, my book tours are in English. So here um, comes the first issue, which you are raising in the introduction, or if you like, uh, the guidelines uh, of um, the, the, the subject matter of this conversation, which is, uh, well, endangered languages. And, and you mentioned in the introduction of uh, your conversation the fact, truly, uh, half, of the language, ha half of the languages of, of, of this world are going to be uh, disappearing until the end of this century. And, uh, uh, perhaps it's uh, shocking to um, even present the information to people that one language disappears every two weeks. Uh, every two weeks we're down um, uh, 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 and, and, uh, uh, and we will be uh, down uh, to more uh, uh, language disappearance in the future. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, uh, English engulfs the rest. So I am writing in Greek, uh, as you say, but uh, uh, what I do immediately comes out in translation, mostly English translation. And uh, while my um, literature production uh, is in my own, own language, Greek, uh, it is not in Greek 
that the readers read me. So I would say that, uh, well, I, I mean, it's, uh, it, it may sound a little strange, although in 2020, it is not that strange. 90% of my readership is not a Greek readership. So what is individually produced in one language has, um, say, a, 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 a more immediate effect in different languages other than Greek. So that's, that's one issue because we're talking about some kind of uh, linguistic, linguistic Darwinism here. Uh, you have English and the English and Gulfs, the rest. And then weaker languages tend to disappear. There's obviously the other issue that relates to what Ivana mentioned uh, just now, that we don't have enough translations. Indeed, we do not have enough translations as far as, uh, well, um, less um, uh, uh, conservative literature is concerned. The less mm -hmm. conservative you are, the more difficulties you will have as far as to uh, being translated. So uh, th this, is one, this is one general issue. Uh, but also, uh, I would like to raise uh, the fact that, again, going back to what Ivana said uh, about the, um, uh, the discourse in politics, uh, I mean, you have something which is really settled as far as uh, the, the discourse of politics and language is concerned. You have, I mean, if you, if you go and, and, and listen to a speech, say, um, well, um, somebody from the European Commission, you will hear words like implementation, prevail, we will contain the situation, the extraordinary circumstances, solidarity, um, my, migration management, you know, all these beautiful words, which are um, an abstract uh, world, uh, an abstract discourse of good intentions. And I will finish um, here with an example. You have all these, you know, very nice things, you know, that I, I'm not disputing neither the, uh, well, the abstract language I cannot dispute. It's there for you to see, you know, these are abstract terms and um, the reality is being described by those terms. And I'm not even disputing the good intentions. Good is in, intentions may be there. On the other hand, you know, I read today about uh, the refugees that are coming uh, uh, from um, the islands, from the eastern islands of Greece to Athens now. And, um, you know, they have their papers because, you know, they're given the refugee papers and they're going to a small square in Athens. Um, it's called Victoria Square. And you've got about uh, 100 families sleeping there every night. Now, I mean, I cannot help but seeing, you know, this huge contrast between this language of the abstract language, like I said, of good in intentions and the reality of the people, which is quite different. Wow, that's such a wide scope of things that we can discuss for the rest of the panel. Um, I I'd like to um, sort of just quickly rephrase the three points that I think um, really relate to this discussion the most. And that's the first one is, of course, your uh, description of a linguistic Darwinism and the fact that certain languages dominate both our daily discourse, our, um, the way we digest news and events around us, and as well, um, literary sphere and, and how you operate within it. Um, the second one is the lack of translations of uh, texts and, and, and articles and whatnot that are um, less conservative. Of course, um, uh, many uh, readers will have read um, sort of classics and uh, translated classics in different languages, whereas avant-garde literature and um, anything that is slightly out of the uh, out of the out of the box will usually remain untranslated. And the last one is, of course, language's role in, in the discourse, uh, political discourse of all different languages, the different different countries. Um, we are all following um, events in Belarus right now and on the eastern um, Mediterranean, and all of it. Um, and are, and as journalists and citizens are discouraged by the fact that the language used to describe what's going on. Um, or reactions, be it from Brussels, the United States, or other uh, supranational organizations are um, empty and meaningless. 
So having those three points in mind, uh, if, if I managed to paraphrase you correctly, Demetrius, I'm sorry. Please step in if I uh, um, made a mistake. But with those three points in mind, um, I would um, like to go back to even again. Um, the issue of linguistic Darwinism or the fact that certain languages dominate and others um, fall from use. How do you think that affects um, both what you, the, the audience you write for and what do you think about what you think about when you're um, working on, 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 on your projects? Do you think about um, uh, books and articles that would be interesting to only a regional audience or a European one or a global one? I know that by definition, writers don't like to be limited in that way, but is that the consideration that you, that you have now considering um, sort of the reach you might want for your writing? Oh, well, is, is, the question is not addressed to me, it's, it's to all of us, I suppose. Uh, I, I began with Ivana, but then you, you're, uh, you're free to step in, Dimitris, of course. Um, okay, <laughs> there's a lot of questions here, so <laughs> it's very hard to, to squeeze them in um, two or three minutes, but I, I'll try to say something that I think is very important. Uh, from the point of writer, um, I, of course, uh, I'm thinking thinking um, on my readers, but I'm not trying to squeeze or to fit um, in some kind of um, box uh, that should uh, be um, elegant or uh, likable or lovable for my European or worldwide readers. Um, I think that we need uh, always to go back and think, do we have something to say? And if we have something to say, which is important and authentic, and um, universal, then we will find the language for it. Um, about this um, Darwinism that you said, and this uh, dominant language and the politic and the language, I think that the uh, first problem that we have is uh, in these countries, for example, is uh, in educational system. Uh, we don't teach uh, kids in a school that language belongs to them. Uh, at first, I think that um, they're a lot of time uh, frightened with the language uh, and they're always afraid that they're not speaking pure enough or well enough or correct enough. So that's why we have this bipolar um, relation to the language. Uh, in the first row, uh, the, the, the kids are thinking that language belongs or to the, some all dead writers or to academics. And then in the other road, they're defending that language as a part of their identity. But they're very uh, much time afraid to speak on their own language. And they are very uh, modeled in uh, elementary school already, how to say correctly, how to uh, have a pure language. And I think that's the maybe first mistake. And then uh, it just, um, brings on the other problem with language that we have in a future on politic level, on um, uh, society level, and if you want, also on private level, because we don't feel that language belongs to us. Um, other thing uh, that you point with those languages which are disappearing um, every two weeks or something like that, um, I don't think that is so dramatic or something that is tragic, especially from the point of view if uh, language belongs to the people. And while there are some people that, that uh, they need to express on some language, this language will exist. Of course, I'm not talking now um, on this radical situation when there is, um, I don't know, war and uh, one group wants to clean the other group and uh, take over the language and everything. I'm just talking about this uh, disappearing because language is not something that belongs, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, living in the space just for itself. Language is just our need to express our feelings, our thoughts, our ideas, our theories. So um, I think that we shouldn't be approaching to the language from that point of view. Um, 
Thank you, Ivana. So you, you, the points you highlighted were uh, insistence on the purity of language and also um, uh, the fact that there isn't private ownership or individual ownership of language is something that's imposed or superimposed. Dimitris, um, can you please continue? I'm sorry for breaking you off earlier. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, um, I will continue with uh, a disagreement with uh, Ivana, if Ivana allows. Um, I, I don't think we're in front of the fact in which everybody's free to speak any language they like. And then gradually uh, these speakers are dying out just because, well, I mean, uh, they, they demographically uh, uh, being, um, uh, uh, they have a demographic problem, say, and, and gradually uh, the languages are um, being dying out because the speakers are dying out. Uh, we have a more serious problem here, here and, the, and the problem is more um, of a political kind because um, a language is uh, connected to a system of power and power relations. So uh, power relations produce speaking subjects and these power relations sometimes have a lot to do with how many people or what kind of people are speaking a language. So um, the way we are protecting endangered species, I think, of course, endangered languages uh, should be protected. And I think, well, I mean, it, it's good that, you know, this, this job uh, is, is being done. Um, we have, uh, and, and, and the same goes for literature here. Uh, we have uh, literature that is being produced um, and is more, um, well, palatable, if I may uh, use the expression. And there is literature that is less palatable. There is literature uh, that is being uh, produced to be read by millions of people. And there is literature that is being read, uh, written to uh, to be read by by less people and and for, for instance i mean we have the case of poetry we all know that uh, people read much less poetry than uh, they would read uh, a novel a, well what i would call a, a standard novel with an authorial narration what we used to have in the 19th century for instance what we call um, you know we have um, uh, if, if, I, if I could make um, a narratological point of view here, you have, for instance, uh, what we call authorial narration, which is a narration that comes, if you like, from an Olympian point of view. There is a narrator that uh, discusses everything as if he's God himself, and he knows very well what happens in the universe of his novel, say. And we have... Um, Narrations that are from one point of view. For instance, uh, um, going back to Ivana, uh, if I'm not very much mistaken, her book Hotel Tito is narrated from the perspective of a girl. So what we call uh, in, in, in narratology internal focalization. Uh, she has an internal reflector, uh, which is this, uh, this young girl. Uh, which is obviously, you know, not the conservative, not the narration of the conservative kind that, you know, we read in most books. So, uh, and people are not exactly used to something which is not the norm. Uh, and therefore, well, poetry is obviously a more extreme case. So when you come to a publisher, the publisher, what he will do is he will make a decision to publish a book, but he also wants to make a safe decision. He doesn't want to publish a book that he will sell only 100 copies of. He wants to sell the book, right? So uh, he will make a decision that will not be in favor of somebody who is different in his writing. I don't want to obviously hear, uh, you know, uh, go into the, you know, the details of that we can go on and, and discuss what, what is that that they pick and what is that they don't pick, what is it that is being translated and what is it that it's not being translated. Uh, but, but in general, there is a norm. And the safest solution is to go by the norm. And that happens on the level of publishing, 
but it also happens on the level of speaking. Um, Dimitris, um, again, fascinating uh, sort of insight into all of that. Um, you mentioned the uh, power relations um, when it comes to sort of like that hierarchy in, in language. Could you give a brief explanation how that works if you would like in the example of Greece, sort of um, Greek um, um, literature right now and one that you're involved in and then also that relation with the Anglosphere and so forth? Well, I, I think I, I, I somehow explained that by when I said that uh, we have uh, a specific terminology of abstract language, which is the norm, which is the norm um, as far as um, the political discourse is concerned, and it is the norm as far as the media discourse is concerned. So when you speak that language, uh, when you, um, you have, say, the knowledge or the education to speak that language, you are immediately a privileged speaker, right? So that would give you more power, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are all privileged speakers here because we I all speak also. very, very good English here. So that already uh, puts us on a different register than people from our countries that do not have the capacity, the linguistic capacity to express themselves in English the way we do here. Right? And I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying anything new because all these things are be, uh, have been you know, mentioned and underlined by Michel Foucault more than 50 years ago. So, you know, I don't want to be, you know, it's, it's obvious, you know, knowledge creates power and power creates knowledge and they're interlocking. This is, this is absolutely clear. I guess my question was actually more for a wider audience because not all, uh, uh, not all the viewers of this are um, writers or uh, um, familiar with, with um, Foucault, you know, the background. Yes, of course. yes, absolutely. No, yes, Foucault, Foucault, definitely. I'm sorry if I mentioned him. <laughs> I'm sorry you have mentioned fine. him. No. I think okay. a significant amount, of, significant amount of progressives watches this too, so that's fine. Um, no, but I, I meant more, how does, how does being, um, a, if, for want of a better word, a Greek author. Um, I don't like putting on uh, a sort of an ethnic, national, or any kind of background to anyone unless they accept it on their own. But being Greek author in a world which is dominated by uh, Anglophone writers is actually what I was right. meant. I, 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 again, I mean, you should invite some other Greek author to ask this question because I have been living for, well, uh, for most of my life outside Greece. So I was... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, for eight years in Italy, then I was in London for 13 years, and then in Berlin since 2005. So, you know, uh, of, of course, I'm Greek. I'm definitely Greek. But um, my experience has been an experience between languages, if you mm -hmm. like. So I don't know if you can separate the neurons in my brain that are firing uh, with, you know, with Greek ideas and those that are firing with English or German or, 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 or anything else. I mean, I have been exposed in, in different linguistic showers, if you like. Uh, the product uh, is, is um, actually uh, being um, uh, uh, written down in a language we call Greek, but even that is disputable. Because um, I, I don't know of the uh, ex experience that uh, uh, Ivana has uh, here with her translators. Uh, my experience is that um, um, it happens many times, especially with the English, that the, uh, the translation feeds back into the original, especially when you're working on, on, on a book and that book is concurrently being translated into another language, English or anything else. So, so there is uh, an interesting dialogue taking place among the languages. So I cannot, I, I, I really cannot segregate. I really cannot have, I do not have a Greek box, an English box, an Italian box, a French box. I mean, they, they, they all work together. And um, obviously, uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, another thing is that um, 
before we speak about uh, literature production, uh, we will have to speak about uh, the tradition, the, the literature tradition uh, that uh, brings about uh, our own writing. And that tradition nowadays, as we all know, is um, an international tradition. I mean, we're past um, the phase in which everybody would read their own authors in their own language and then come up with a book. I mean, I would be um, reading the Greek poets from, say, Homer to now, and, you know, Ivana would be reading the Serb, Croat, you know, and, and then coming up with her poetry or her novels. I, 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 you know, I take it that we more or less now, uh, at least to a great extent, are reading uh, the same texts or are picking our own cherries from the same cherry tree, if you like. Mm -hmm. Thank Just you, Dimitri. I was going to, uh, okay. Um, please go ahead with your reflections, then I have a question for you, Isabel, that I was waiting for. Uh -huh. Okay, you can ask maybe. Yeah, um, I think um, mentioning the issue of power relations and language is something that I think you understand in particular. Um, I think one of the um, problems with having, let's say, um, non-South Slavic speaking communities um, be aware of the modern, uh, modern liter literature production in um, even Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, and so on and so forth, is the fact that language is a big barrier. And even among those who do speak the language, there is, um, Dimitris mentioned this as well, in our perception of public figures or uh, journalists or whatnot who speak it in a certain way, um, uh, accented uh, interpretations of language that come across with the Albanian community, with the Hungarian community, and other communities or something that lead to um, sort of societal uh, prejudice um, in, in the way people relate to those people. So yes, how can, how, um, besides your points, of course, how do power relations, how do state, status and hierarchy affect, in language affect sort of uh, the Western Balkan community? Uh, if that makes sense. I hope that I will, yes, I will come to also answer to your question, but uh, first of all, um, uh, Dimitri mentioned the international community and the language of the international uh, community. And it's a very um, reduced language, it's a bureaucratic language and a very uh, a poor language, actually. And uh, sometimes this, or, or very often, actually, um, is used not to do something, actually, not to, to improve the uh, situation in the field of human rights. And uh, um, also, uh, the, uh, when it comes to um, uh, power, uh, uh, this power component of uh, language, of course, uh, uh, also it's uh, demonstrated in uh, uh, e economic relations, uh, for example. Every, uh, almost everywhere in the world, the ethnic minorities or language minorities, let's say, uh, are uh, always... Um, um, on the level of uh, everyday life standards, uh, they uh, they live on a um, uh, lower scale, every economic scale, uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, uh, for example, um, for ex the, 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 it's not case just in the in the Balkans, but also we spoke about uh, the lack of um, translations. Uh, but uh, uh, especially uh, when it comes to among the basic uh, um, and the new literature. But uh, uh, the problem is that also uh, among the literature in uh, uh, local languages, it's also on the margins, especially in uh, uh, Serbia, for example, I suppose that it's a similar situation in Croatia or Kosovo or everywhere. But uh, uh, if I speak from uh, a Serbian uh, angle, uh, uh, it's uh, if you don't produce uh, this nationalistic narrative uh, in last four decades, uh, you will be uh, completely marginalized and uh, uh, 
your voice it uh, couldn't be heard by the uh, audience. Uh, for example, uh, we now uh, work in production of uh, theater play about uh, Srebrenica genocide, and um, uh, 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 the author of the play is uh, 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 Vlad Pakovic, and uh, the, uh, I think nobody except the Dreykowski Committee would produce such kind of uh, th uh, theater play. And uh, uh, what is our uh, what is the topic of the, the play and uh, what is important topic for the Helsinki Committee? It's uh, uh, the role of uh, uh, intellectual elites in uh, producing those narratives which led to war and uh, uh, which keep the whole region still captured in uh, this uh, nationalistic and uh, ethnicized uh, uh, narratives. And uh, um, uh, that is, uh, uh, we have this just reprint of uh, 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 same nationalistic narratives uh, uh, through decades. And uh, uh, it's uh, completely, uh, uh, um, it's a stimulation, I mean, of reality. It's not reality and we, uh, could see uh, this, uh, for example, uh, in, uh, during the election campaign in Montenegro and its reflection in uh, uh, Serbia, uh, for example, that uh, um, uh, 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 pro-Serbian parties, for example, and the uh, church, uh, uh, what kind of narratives and what kind of language uh, they used. And uh, when they say, uh, for example, democracy, corruption, rule of law, uh, Etc. You, uh, if you put uh, those words in uh, their own context, uh, you will see that those words are empty shells and the focusing actually on of their uh, slogans, uh, etc. It's uh, uh, on uh, this uh, uh, ethnic uh, nationalistic uh, narratives and uh, and goals. Um. Uh, one follow-up question of what, with what you said about um, avant-garde artists. Would you then agree that um, uh, any kind of artist, be it um, in the visual, written, or other forms in Serbia, those who um, challenge the main political narrative of the ruling party there, how can you explain it for the viewers how difficult it might or might not be for those people to gain a wider audience and um, in, in the whole country and perhaps the region as well? Uh, that it's almost impossible because uh, the, uh, the society, uh, actually the political elite, does, uh, they uh, don't allow debate in the society. And that is the main uh, problem. Uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, reflection or critical thinking about uh, reality. And uh, it's uh, very hard to reach uh, broader audience uh, uh, of course, uh, in the internet and uh, that those social media tools help us, but uh, it's. Uh, uh, um, I think that uh, to change that is a long-term process, uh, actually, and uh, uh, to reach people. But uh, this is uh, what, uh, for example, avant-gardistic artists or uh, uh, do now. It's some foundation for the future, actually. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, uh, that is the um, uh, uh, long-term perspective. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, uh, uh, just uh, one uh, thing, because we are still captured uh, in the past and how uh, the language is a uh, uh, powerful tool. For example, in Serbia, uh, this is 25 years of, from uh, since genocide in uh, Srebrenica in the Arena. And uh, for example, uh, speaking about Srebrenica uh, in Serbia uh, as a genocide, it's almost forbidden. But uh, uh, the word the genocide, it's almost forbidden. It's not used uh, in the law, and but it's also uh, not used in the uh, media or those cultural narratives, uh, for example, because this uh, uh, word actually uh, uh, show uh, exactly the character of that time. 
it's not, uh, for example, enough to say it, it was massive crime. And uh, we know why they don't want to say it was a genocide, because uh, 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 if they um, uh, say massive crime, it's uh, some hidden connotations, etc. But uh, genocide is explicit and uh, 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 explain the character of that uh, war in the uh, continuing, thank you, Isabella. Continuing on this thread of identity, national identities, and um, mainstream narratives that affect writing, even a, um, would you, how would you then deem the um, avant-garde scene or the um, progressive scene, be it literature, art, theater? You in 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 Croatia, you have a director such such as Oliver uh, Frljic, who has managed to deal with some of the um, themes from the war and stuff like that. Do you think um, there's how do a, how does the public react to um, stuff like that in Croatia? And B, um, it, what are the uh, deficiencies of the scene or what could it do better to confront these sensitive political topics um, or historical ones uh, on an everyday basis? It's, <laughs> it's also not several topic in one and it's Sorry. hard. <laughs> you, you're all from different countries with different focuses. So I yes, yes. just see the questions as a general sort of, yeah. Yes, um, the, the, the uh, general topic is language and what we are trying to, to, to say with it. So the first thing when we are talking about uh, avant-garde, uh, now uh, the avant-garde and this scene in Croatia, Serbia, it's past for us. But uh, at the present, avant-garde uh, was uh, something that they didn't want to preserve past. They didn't want to preserve a language before they wanted to make to create something new and i think that from that point of view every generation has a right to make their own language in their present so uh, just to get back a little bit uh, i think it's 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 very good to preserve um things especially when you're I, I wasn't talking from the same point of view as Dimitris uh, and definitely we need to preserve um, a languages uh, the the layers of the languages the culture because in that point of view we can be much more aware of our past and of our present and definitely of, of our future but um, for example I have a 15 year years old daughter and the um, language of fiction for her is English. She's mm -hmm. uh, talking on Croatia, but for that generation, we need to have communication with them. And I cannot, um, it, it's totally wrong, I think, to come from this point of view, you need to preserve your language, you need to uh, be aware that if your generation will have this kind of hybrid between Croatian and English, and it's very funny for me, but it's not funny for them, it's their language, yeah. because it's yeah. their system of understanding. And the English is language of fiction, because all the books, uh, all the series on Netflix, uh, all the music, it's coming from that language to them. And we don't know what will happen uh, because language is a vivid and it's just mm -hmm. reflecting, uh, it's, it's reflecting um, our present, our, our today. So I think that every generation um, uh, needs to have some step away from preservation, from the old values, because language is also the value. And the, the old language for the younger genera generation is just the old values. And um, I think that we are, uh, it's, it's inevitable. We always uh, come to we, we always come to the same gap with the generations, and there are always things that we cannot understand or that we want to preserve because it's our time, it's our um, uh, cultural environment, and, and uh, we feel good among that. So um, yes, you want to say if I can, yeah. if I just yeah. uh -huh. Sorry. Uh, please go ahead. Of course, I didn't. Because question, I would like to yeah. add something uh, to this. What Ivana uh, uh, said actually about preservation of, of language, because uh, in uh, Serbia, uh, this slogan uh, uh, it's a, a very powerful tool actually uh, to um, uh, to reach some uh, geopolitical uh, 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 goals of uh, uh, Serbian elites. And actually, uh, using those uh, slogans uh, to uh, keep alive Serbian language or uh, Cyrillic letter, 
actually they uh, uh, use that uh, to to control uh, territories of neighboring uh, countries. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, those slogans, I don't don't say uh, always, but sometimes in, uh, for example, a Balkans case, in Serbian case, uh, 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 this has this uh, hidden agenda and uh, hidden connotation, and uh, um, uh, that is why it's very important uh, to uh, contextualize actually all those uh, slogans and uh, uh, put them in the uh, local context, actually. So my question for both Ivana and Isabella and Demetrius, of course, is how then do you preserve language and uh, advocate for preserving language without making it nationalist? Because it has been something that's been a nationalist rallying cry in this part of the world, in every single part of the world. It's used uh, by nationalists in the far right in the United States, in many countries in Europe, and so on and so forth. Well, so uh, whoever wants to uh, go ahead first, okay, I, I, maybe. I, I, I will Even try, Isabella I will, I will try or, the best uh, answer, and there is no answer, uh, at least not the simple answer on that, because uh, language is so much more than language, and by preserving a language, uh, we are doing a lot of things. Uh, as Dimitri, as Dimitri said, uh, also there is a, a connection between power and the language, and uh, and a lot of um, uh, interested groups in that, uh, but. Uh, when we go back to, to, to something that is um, point of language uh, is a, a will and, and uh, this uh, wanting for understanding, for communication. So uh, I think uh, that is the maybe main thing that we need to keep in mind and preserve. What, what do we want to achieve with our language? Uh, or uh, why do we want to understand someone else? just because of the language or just because of the culture or just because of the um, literature or, or we really want to hear what this person wants to say to us or, or write to us. So um, I am for, um, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, of course, we need to, to, to preserve and, and to try to keep it, uh, but uh, uh, with a sense of uh, rationality, with the, with the sense of that we have now the new generations already, which they have their own language, and we need to, to give them right to their own language. Not to give them, we cannot give them, they will take that. Anyhow, like we took our right to have our language or, uh, I don't know, point of view. So uh, I, I'm for this just to always keep in mind that why, why do we use that language in the first place? Why do we need language? Isabella, Demetrius, which of you wants uh, to go first? Just I, okay. okay. Um, I, I hope I, I will not make it too complicated. Um, when I, um, I read um, again, the guidelines to uh, today's discussion. Uh, the person that came uh, to mind uh, was the, if you like, the Ua linguist, that the, the arch linguist, uh, Ferdinand de Saussure, uh, who makes a distinction between, uh, well, I mean, it is in French, the distinction, but the distinction is between langue, langage, and parole. Uh, now, langage is, is the function and uh, also the um, capacity uh, that we have to speak and change the language. Um, lang, the language, is, if you like, the social fact of the language, the fact that we have Greek and the fact that we have English. Um, now, every speaker uh, knows a part of that language. I do not know the Greek fully. Um, especially with ancient Greek that you have, you know, a huge dictionary there with, uh, you know, starting from Homer to now, but nobody does. We're all um, contributing to that. And there is the individual language, the parole, uh, as uh, Saussure would say, which is our contribution to language as individuals, right? If I have, if I want to cut my nails, uh, I have the capacity to do so. Uh, so this is the language part of it. I have, I have 
the capability to do so, but I need a nail clipper to do so. This is the language, the tool that I will use to do that. And the individual way that I have to cut my nails, each one of us, I'm sure, cuts their nails a little differently than the rest, is the individual contribution to the language. That's the parole. Uh, it, parole, of course, in French means speech, but um, associate does not exactly mean speech as in spoken language. He also mean, means the written part of the language. So this is how we contribute. And this, this is how we, uh, as authors, uh, me and Ivana, especially here, because you know, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to Ivana because she's uh, uh, the, uh, the, the literary author here. So uh, this is how we do it. And, and gradually, there is uh, a feedback situation. There is a language that encapsulates us, contains us, and from within, we change it somehow, both on the, on the level of a community and on the level of the individual speaker and the writer. And this is how you have this gradual change uh, that brings about, uh, if you like, a major change in uh, decades or centuries. Um, and if I would go back to what I said before, that some of us and all of us here are privileged speakers of that language. Uh, for instance, Ivana is capable of writing a great novel or um, a great poetry collection, and that will be published and read. But it doesn't only depend on her, because it depends on the readers as well. And like we said before, if Ivana produces something which is against the grain, if I use the expression, then a publisher or a public or the reader are going to be less willing in getting involved in that. And this is, a, again, the case of poetry, if I can go back to poetry. We have very reluctant readers of poetry, and that means that we have people that do not get involved in very personal, in, in a very personal language. In, very, in, in a language that would make a difference. So we're going back to uh, the situation of having a norm and fighting against the norm. This is a, a slow and obviously a very gradual procedure that may bring fruits, but these fruits are going to be long-term fruits. So we're sitting here and from the point of view of, um, uh, of, um, uh, of each one of us, uh, it, 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 is, it is quite difficult to, uh, to make this kind of discourse analysis and say, well, it's going to be changing uh, uh, in, 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 in such and such way, or it's going to go towards this direction or, or towards the other, other direction. We're almost half blind there. There are some things that we see and there are some things that we don't see. Perhaps us that we're invited in symposia, taking part in panels, meeting other international authors as we normally do. Perhaps we can say a few things, about, a few things more about, about this change. But, but in, in general, it's, 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 I mean, even you know, when you come to discuss issues of uh, world literature, what is this thing? I mean, we have a very restricted view of what's happening. Uh, so what we know is that we are working towards some kind of change. And we need readers as well that will support us in that. I mean, um, I, I was always saying that uh, you need to have open-minded readers. You need to have readers that uh, are, are willing to explore uh, more and and uh, and this is a this is an age in which we have, for instance, less and less poetry readers. And I personally think that uh, somebody who is not familiar with poetry, he's a reader. Say he's a reader of novels in general, but he's unfamiliar with poetry, uh, is somehow a handicapped reader mm -hmm. because he does not have the open-mindedness to. Um, if you like, uh, 
metabolize, if I may use the, uh, the expression, a text which does not uh, belong to um, what, what, I, what I call the, um, a, 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 a linguistic norm. If that's, that's too general, of course. So it depends on us and it depends also on the people that uh, our texts are meeting when they're being published. So it is, um, um, it, it is a very complicated process. And uh, obviously, you know, um, it, it, was, it was very difficult for me when I, when I saw the guidelines. I, I, you know, I thought to myself, oh my God, how am I going to discuss that? And especially uh, with the time frame of, of one hour. Uh, but certainly, uh, we, uh, what we need to underline here, I think, is that we, uh, uh, we should aim for uh, more open-ended kinds of writing that uh, would go against the grain as much as possible. Thank you, Dimitris. Well, I would say that this discussion in itself has been open-ended, um, definitely raised more questions in my mind than it's answered, and I'm only an observer of your work, all of your, your work, um, uh, by that I mean on the panelist, and um, rather than a, someone who produces um, literature. But I would like to ask Isabella two things now. So uh, an answer to the previous question that you wanted to comment on, um, to what extent can we promote the preservation of language without um, falling into nationalist traps um, or allowing for nationalist elements, identity related elements to affect um, the way we preserve and nurture language. And B, um, again, uh, I don't mean this to pit panelists against one another, but what if, if you could generally say, what is sort of a blind spot for artists and writers when it comes um, to reaching out to the public and really getting their message across. What would you wish you saw more uh, of uh, as someone who is involved in the inter intercultural aspect of promoting art? Uh, yeah, uh, it's a funny thing that, for example, uh, during the 90s, uh, uh, local languages of uh, former Yugoslavia call it now in different, uh, with different names, actually Bosnian, Serbian, Croatian, Montenegrin, etc., are uh, uh, were dominated uh, in the international forums. And uh, for example, uh, during the 90s, uh, you always uh, had a bunch of people from uh, uh, Yugoslavia. And uh, when we are together, we did, of course, we didn't speak uh, English, we spoke uh, <laughs> one of those languages and we uh, understood each other of course and uh, what wow. I see today that the Russian dominated <laughs> dominating the, those international uh, uh, forums and uh, what show actually that uh, Balkans it's not anymore <laughs> so important as it was in uh, uh, Nikes, but we still have uh, those uh, problems, uh, uh, those issues uh, from Nikes, and uh, they are still uh, uh, very alive in the in the Balkans, and um, uh, also uh, international context. Uh, it's uh, not uh, um, uh, how to say. Uh, 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 it's not good for um, uh, actually, uh, or actually, it's uh, uh, good for uh, a misuse, a misuse of uh, 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 language in uh, political uh, purposes, actually, because if we live uh, in the century of uh, where uh, in which dominate uh, this. Uh, uh, ideology of identities and uh, identities uh, 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 based uh, uh, on um, uh, ethnicity and uh, especially on uh, religion and uh, language. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, 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 very easy to manipulate uh, with this uh, uh, language uh, issue. And uh, uh, what we need uh, actually is uh, the change of those uh, political uh, narratives and uh, politics, uh, uh, not just in our local context, but also in uh, uh, international context. Uh, um, 
I think that uh, uh, related to uh, answer on your culturalism, um, I think uh, that uh, uh, what we can do now actually is uh, to uh, organize and uh, to create actually space uh, as much as possible uh, the space uh, for a meeting point uh, actually of um, artists uh, uh, or um, scholars or um, ordinary people, I mean, uh, uh, which speak uh, uh, different languages or comes from different, uh, uh, different cultures. And uh, that it's only, uh, as I said in the beginning, can uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, can produce to some um, uh, 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 progress on uh, in uh, um, speaking in long term. Uh, um. Yeah. Um, so we're. I think we're close, slowly, slowly coming to the end of the time we have allotted for this panel. I would like to sort of go back to the um, kernel. Um, question of, of this panel, the main one, but also see, have it, shape it in, in, in a more forward-looking perspective. Um, and sort of would like to give all of you time to talk about how you would like language to affect the discourse in, in your field, but in our societies in general, um, whether through um, what kind of work you would like to see produced more, or what, what you would like society to, how you would wish people reacted to certain types of writing and, and, um, and, and language and all that. Um, so uh, even would you like to start since we've been starting with you since the beginning? Um, but well, yeah, you get your yes, time. I'm, I'm not sure that I can answer to this question because it doesn't depend on our wishes. I think, think it depends on uh, are we capable to um, catch in our writing this uh, time and this spirit and the issues that are uh, really um, bothering us and the readers. And if mm -hmm. we do that, then we will find the right language. This is the right language. And then the reaction will be what the Dimitri said. We can then change the world from a little bit, if we can. I'm, I'm not even sure. I think the best that we can do is really to, um, to catch what is what is going on now and uh, um, get this awareness on a higher level and then maybe we can maybe we can uh, i don't know um, uh, do something a little bit with that but uh, but i'm not sure uh, but especially what i think it's not that we can do something and then we want this reaction or that reaction. Uh, I think it's impossible. And I think that maybe some number of writers are really falling on that, you know, trying to, to do something uh, which will cause this reaction. I think that we can cause reaction only if we uh, have this uh, capability to be authentic and uh, to be aware of what is going on around us. And then to, to press something in, in our readers. And we will press that if we press something in ourselves, if we write about things that we are really, really engaged in. So um, then we can really communicate, then we can really create the language. Beside of that, um, I think it's, it's only, I don't know, a um, bunch of words. Just briefly, I, I didn't mean um, sort of an artificial, um, for, forceful sort of creation of things. Of course, it should be organic, but more like themes. What do you think are themes that um, need to be tackled to, in your interpretation, cap capture the present moment? Or, yeah, but or I, 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 I would give the, the same questions. That you, you don't pick the themes. It's, it's maybe ban banal, you know, when the people say, I don't pick the themes, themes uh, will pick me. But uh, I write in that way, if uh, I'm bothered with something for a long time enough, um, for, for a really long time, then uh, I know this is the theme or the topic uh, which will in which I could be engaged for 
300 pages or for 200 pages. You really need not to pick something, but be bothered with something for a really, really long time. And then you will have your theme. So um, it's not like uh, we are picking it from some kind of uh, offer. <laughs> so um, yeah, my, my, my uh, answer would be the same, yeah. I love speaking, interviewing writers um, because they always assume I'm trying to make them work like journalists and uh, whereas I'm just asking them questions about their, <laughs> what, what they do. So with that intent in mind, uh, Dimitris, would you like to contribute your answer? Yes, yes, of course. I, I would agree with uh, Ivana. Of course I would. Um, uh, well, I mean, to, to sum up, what I would say is that uh, uh, what I mentioned before is that we have a political discourse uh, and we somehow um, gave uh, here our brief descriptions about what this discourse is. Uh, what is worrying for me is that uh, this political discourse um, starts to bear a strange resemblance to corporate discourse. Um, it's somehow we're talking as if um, um, governments are becoming businesses and uh, promoting uh, their interests. That, that's, that's one thing. So uh, I think it is a problem that language is becoming more and more institutionalized. And uh, literature obviously goes against that. We will not have the same, the same themes with Ivana. In fact, Ivana will go on with her writing and I will go on with my writing. And uh, we uh, probably differ very much in, 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 in a lot of respects. Uh, but I mean, I, I suppose this is exactly what we should not do. Uh, normalize, give guidelines, um, give themes, or suggest subject matters and styles. And uh, it's quite funny because, uh, uh, well, my new uh, Swedish translator, uh, I realized uh, he also has translated into Swedish uh, Gerald Marnay, who is an Australian writer. Um, well, I could not imagine a writer. No, I, in fact, I can imagine a lot of writers that are very different from what I'm doing. And Marnay is one. Now you have a translator that is doing both. This is exactly the healthiest of things growing in difference. And I think this is what will continue to happen. And I think this is the most hopeful thing now, growing in difference. Mm -hmm. And then what in, again, not because one should select themes or pick certain things, but then how in your interpretation does one author, one author's work capture the moment? I'd never capture the moment. I never capture the moment. Myself. I. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, I, you. I uh, as, as you may know, I have been writing a trilogy which I completed in 2018 and I was working for about 30 years in order to do that. I, I don't think I have captured any moment. Uh, it, it is not. It is not at all about. But capturing the moment, moment is also provoking a debate, uh, isn't it? it is, Which could be relevant to the current moment. Uh, what do you mean? Because you spoke also about our blind spot earlier, didn't you? I mean, I asked Isabella that. I was wondering what she meant as a blind spot for writers, but she didn't really go into that. I guess she didn't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I, I will mean, go back to that question. Mm -hmm. No, the, 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 this, this, these are very tricky, tricky things in the sense that I mean, uh, how can we talk about a blind spot if it is a blind spot? If it is a blind spot, then by definition. It is something that we have no awareness of, right? The blind spot is, is the place where the optic nerve meets the retina. And it is exactly- I'm aware of the definition of a blind spot, but yes. others- so, 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 of course, I, I know you are, 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 you're aware of that, but, but because it is that, it is exactly what we don't see. So what we cannot- Personally, but someone see, else might be we, able we to- cannot, we, we, cannot, we cannot speak of. So, so we, we, can, we can have perhaps a hazy overview of what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. And um, 
uh, well, I mean, in my work, I mean, it's my work is there for people to see. Um, there have been obviously very definite subject matters. I don't know, the scapegoat. Uh, uh, you know, critics say that I'm, I'm speaking about the outcasts and marginalized people, but I'm not ca capturing the moment, the whole of history from its beginning mm -hmm. to its getting to us is about marginalized people, people that had no voice, mm -hmm. outcasts. I'm not capturing the moment. I'd say as a journalist, that's really capturing the moment. <laughs> right, okay. Can I say just but, 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 but Please go ahead. No, 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 of course, of course. Yeah. We I, know, always, I know, I know, I know. I know. No, we always had that. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and, and I will stay with this. We are privileged speakers here, and we are privileged people. I came back from holiday yesterday, and I was in a very fine hotel, you know, spending time and money. And okay. um, I, I, I came back, and as I was approaching Athens uh, with a car, there was a poor guy, you know, uh, uh, who was waiting there, and he came to the car and he asked me for 20 cents. And I did not have 20 cents to give him because I, what I spend, I spend by credit card now. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, we, we have to bear in mind that despite the fact that we have all these good intentions, like perhaps the European Union has all these good intentions of abstract, beautiful language, there are different worlds within the same world. And we have to be aware of that. And we, 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 we may even be capturing a moment, but we are capturing a moment from our own point of view. Which is, a, you know, which is a very relative way of saying that we're capturing the moment. I don't know, mm. uh, you know, this is... Well, this the is, word no. is fine. Yeah. We could yeah. start the debate now. And uh, uh, yes, I think that uh, uh, artists uh, should uh, actually uh, take uh, reality as a topic and uh, uh, they can capture reality. That's what uh, I was talking uh, what about. What I would like to see, yeah, yes, and uh, what I think is uh, what I would like to see on uh, artistic and culture scene is uh, uh, more uh, work uh, uh, about the past and uh, uh, rethinking uh, of the past because this past is still present. Uh, uh, here we still lived uh, this past, and uh, we had to overcome that uh, uh, that past. And um, I um, I'll remind that um, actually the war in former Yugoslavia started in the cultural sphere in the eighties, and uh, uh, at that time uh, what we had actually it's uh, uh, the huge uh, art uh, production, if that we can call art. Uh, um, especially in literature and uh, theater, uh, uh, which uh, promoted those nationalistic narratives about uh, endangered languages, about endangered nations, uh, 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 etc. And that led us to the war, actually. And uh, I think that if we want to change this, uh, the work of artists, uh, it's uh, very important and uh, uh, we need more of those socially engaged artists and the uh, Helsinki Community Earth Community, uh, Committee will continue to work with those socially engaged uh, artists uh, because that is the way to reach, uh, uh, to reach a broader audience and to change something. There are examples, for example, that some, uh, um, let's say, TV shows uh, changed uh, public uh, opinion in uh, Germany after Second World War. And uh, that is something, uh, uh, the culture, the language, etc., it's also uh, 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 the tool to change public opinion but should be something original, as even I mentioned, because all uh, what uh, uh, dominate uh, today on the uh, culture scene, I mean, what dominate, I don't speak about those who are 
progressive avant-gardistic uh, or in the margins of the so our societies, uh, but uh, 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 the, the mainstream it's uh, unoriginal, it's uh, conservative, nationalistic. Uh, we have this uh, repatriation of our societies. Uh, um, uh, um, yes, <laughs> we need to a topic that we could discuss, I believe, for hours. Yes. Uh, even a, please, you want to make a comment earlier? No, I just um, wanted to say a short comment. When I was talking about capturing the moment, it's not some kind of uh, romantic uh, advertising. It's capturing the moment that you... Because what do we know about history? We know about history from the writers, which were capable to kept the moment, you know, in the 70th century, in the 80th century, at that was the most of the human spirit that we have. That is something what I was talking. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. something which is related to our reality. And if we can engage people to read about our reality, then we can engage people to think about reality and then change something. It's just something that I want to add. Yes, to, 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 to incite a debate, actually. And you can do that to, to tackle this reality. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, 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 I fully agree with uh, Ivana, but uh, the problem here is uh, that uh, unfortunately some of the reality realities. This is the problem. There are no different realities. It's no, 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 no. Simulation of reality and the no, reality. No, no, no. There, there, are, there, there are different perspectives, even on science. You have Newtonian me mechanics and you have quantum mechanics. You have mm -hmm. theory of relativity and you have quantum mechanics. Even in science, we have different realities. And in fact, even in science, they it's different perspective, uh, maybe not uh, yeah, exactly, but but but, view, but, 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 uh, but 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 okay, if we okay, not, let's not become too philosophical now because if we want to go to what is their reality that is there and become platonic about it, then we might say that some people know it and some others don't know it. This is uh, to, to an extent uh, a, a little dangerous because who is there? to be able to say which is their reality with a capital R. Yes, but a good writer, you know, if you, if you write a relevant novel, then that's the relevant reality. Of course, which is your, which is your own perspective. Yes, but uh, um, it uh, then becomes a perspective for many, many people which are... But uh, not for everybody. Not for everybody, but if exactly. you're a lousy writer, then you it's, don't it's, create you it's... don't create a strong and authentic reality and mm. that is connected with capturing of moment because if you kept the moment a lot of people will find themselves in this kind of identification and this kind of reality and True. i agree with you there's a lot of perspective but uh, yes. now get back to writing as a writers if you are capable to to make good reality and when i said good i think authentic not only for us for one person but for universal for for one society or for uh, one uh, kind of marginalized uh, people so that's that's the there's a reality i think and it's yes yes well uh, uh, perhaps uh, our um, disagreement is a disagreement of, of term uh, because the terminology is that uh, the, the reality that literature creates for the people mm -hmm. uh, to uh, somehow internalize when they are your readers. I mean, this is a reality between poets. It is a linguistic reality. And on that note, I, I don't, I mean, on a debate on linguistic reality is really the perfect. Of course, of course, of course, of course. But this is, the, this is the fruitful thing about the discussion. Otherwise, you could yeah. do three separate interviews with each one of us. And mm -hmm. that would be different, wouldn't it? Exactly. And I'm, I, um, I'm very sorry that we all didn't get to be in person in Pollard this year. I would have loved to discuss all these things in person with you individually, over drinks, 
or uh, and uh, as we follow other ones at Poly, but sadly, COVID hasn't uh, made, has made that difficult. Thank you so much for taking your time and being patient with me and my questions. Yeah. Again, um, my goal was to try in some way or another to make uh, your way of thinking clear for a wider public. Hopefully, I managed to do some of that. Um, I'd like to thank Chandra Multimedia for organizing this and wish you a lot of health and productivity in your work, um, creative, random, or under otherwise. Um, and look forward to following it. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.